Jesus taught my guest how to pray, and now she expects God to answer every prayer. She says, this is your finest hour, and you are called to be a glory carrier. Next. Well, I just found out my guest, Tracy Eckert, has a special anointing to heal people with coronavirus. And later, I'll have her pray that. And whatever else God shows her, she'll also pray for you to hear God clearly. I know you want that. In 1995, Tracy escaped her abusive husband in Mexico, fled to the U.S. with her two daughters. She remarried, had a blended family of six teenagers, and listen to this, as a non-Christian, having never read the Bible, she began hearing the audible voice of God. What did God say? Well, I was getting ready for work one day, and again, like you said, I'd never read the Bible. In fact, I didn't even know where the Bible was located in my house. I had one that someone gave me 10 years prior to that, but I didn't even know where it was. And so I wasn't pursuing God. I wasn't pursuing the Lord. And one day I'm getting ready for work and I hear this breaking in of this audible voice. And he said, rebuild my temple. And to me, I was like, I was thinking to myself, what? I'm not Jewish. but. I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I knew it was God. I knew that it was my father. And so it was almost like something like an arrow broke into the atmosphere and opened everything up. And there I was, I just sat there for two hours. I was supposed to be on a conference call and I couldn't believe what I heard. And so then after that, for seven days after that, I heard the same thing. Every morning when I woke up, rebuild my temple rebuild my temple, rebuild my temple. And again, not having ever read the Bible, not knowing the Lord, not pursuing the Lord, I had no idea what he meant by that. But you knew it was him. So you, you actually, not just that, I mean, it's, uh, you began seeing in the invisible world. Yeah, it was really crazy because, you know, I was living this wor worldly life. And when I say worldly life, I mean, you know, my husband and I, John, I mean, we both had these huge careers. We had these six kids, you know, living this incredibly abundant life. And this right here wasn't anything that I expected. Um, and so I didn't have a grid for it. So on the seventh day, I started going into this uh, open eyed trance like vision. And again, I didn't know anybody that ever heard from God. I, w I was a, I wasn't even a Christian. I would go to, to church on Christmas and then rarely I would take my children to church. Really, if you have six teenagers, you really need some help. And so I was looking for some behavioral management, really. So, uh, the, the Holy Spirit broke in on me on the seventh day. I was laying in my bed and I was getting ready to go to sleep. Something came upon me and today I know it was the Holy Spirit and I couldn't move. I was, tr it was truly physically frozen. And all of a sudden the scene appeared, like everything in front of me disappeared in my bedroom and the scene appeared and I could see that I was in New York. And this was back in 1999. So I'm, so I'm in this scene where I'm in New York and I can see angels and demons over the city and they're warring over the city. I see uh, these planes, I see explosions. Um, this man walks up to me and, and he's closer to me than you are. He's about right here. And I can see the skin on his face is melting off of his face. And I can see inside the cavities of his eyes. And he was so sad and he knew he was dying. And his skin and his whole body was covered with, um, I, I didn't even know how to define it, but it looked like an ash or a soot or, a, or even maybe chemical warfare. And he looked to his left and I looked to see what he was looking at. And Sid, he was, he, I saw this huge pile of dead bodies that, that had the same kind of ash all over them. And then, then I was taken out of it and then I was able to move. And I literally thought, 
what I just saw is a real event and it's going to happen. We're going to be attacked in New York. And I wrote down in my journal, there's something about 9-11. There's something about 911. And again, not knowing, never having experienced anything like this, but I knew this, it was real. You had a prophecy in a dream. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it you're was, hearing God's voice. You had a prophecy in a dream. Yeah. Uh, how did you get saved? Well, it was really crazy because I told my husband about this and, um, and he said, um, wow, okay. Well, I know somebody that might know something about this. And so he knew somebody that had had these kind of encounters and she mm. prayed in tongues. And so he invited her over to the house and she told me, you know, what I was experiencing was supernatural and, and it was, uh, you know, a vision that I had had a vision. And uh, so she said, let me, have you ever said uh, the sinner's prayer? And so she led me through it. I got saved. Uh, I invited Jesus to be, to come into my life and be Lord of my life. And uh, then she asked me if I wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I didn't know what that was, but I said, I want everything that God has for me. And so she prayed. And um, about a month later, I was at a Chuck Pierce conference and I got my prayer language in worship. He said, everybody start, you know, praying with your prayer language and I didn't really have one, but I, I had gotten baptized in fire. So I started uh, just saying, ba, 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 ba. And the Lord took my one syllable and air went flying out of my mouth. And this, this, this language, this new language came out. And I mean, ever since then, you know, I've been a woman with my hair on fire pretty much. In fact, my kids say I went from zero to shofar overnight. But with the, this thing about build the temple, uh, you had more dreams and revelation about yeah. that. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, he said rebuild the temple and again, not understanding what that meant. And then he began to over uh, several months, he began to build something line upon line, precept upon precept. And so uh, I went into another trance and he uh, I asked him why we were going to be attacked in New York. And he said on 9-11, he said it's about Babylon. And then after that, which I was like, I didn't even know what Babylon was. Then he gave me a prophetic dream. And in that prophetic dream, um, I was pregnant. And, um, and I asked the Lord, or, or my husband was with me and we were at the doctor in the dream. And John asked the Lord, who's the father? Which is interesting, you know. And I heard audibly in the dream, the father is Zerubbabel, the father is Zerubbabel, the father is Zerubbabel. Did you know who Zerubbabel was? No. And I woke up the next morning and I thought, oh, I hope that's not a demon. I hope I'm not having a, a, a baby demon or something. And it, you know, God is so good. That next day I was doing a, a, a prayer, a 30 day prayer thing mm -hmm. from, from Chuck Pierce. And uh, that day I was praying out of where the Lord said, um, to Zerubbabel, rebuild my temple. And I'm like, my mind is blown. I said, that's the baby that I'm having. And he said to rebuild the temple. So Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple. And so, and they came out of Babylon. They were coming out of Babylonian captivity. And so all of this started to make a story. But again, I wasn't quite sure what the significance was it, what, what it was at that time. So what did this all mean? I mean, build the temple, uh, having a baby like Zerubbabel. Uh, what does it all mean? Well, basically what the Lord showed me, I spent several years, um, nine, ten years in Ezra and the book of Haggai and in Zechariah. And I was just engrossed in this story of, of this second temple. You know, Zerubbabel was such a fascinating character, but yet not very many Christians even know who he is. I mean, we know about Moses who led the first Exodus and we know about David and Solomon who built the first temple, mm -hmm. but nobody knows who Zerubbabel is. And he actually led the second Exodus and built the second temple. So he's a fascinating character. 
and he's in the line of Judah. He's in the line of kings. And, and then he partners with this man named Joshua, who is, who is a priest. And so you've got this situation where you've got this, this new temple that's being rebuilt. And so what the Lord showed me that this temple was a symbol of the rebuilt tabernacle of David, or uh, which is 9-11, Amos 9-11, huh. right? So the shift came on 9-11 in the world. And, and so on that day, something shifted, right? So, so also it's nine, it's Hebrews 9-11. We are the temple of the Lord that, that is not made with human hands. And so we are the fleshly temples. We are the rebuilt tabernacle of David. So when Jesus came, what he did is he laid the foundation of the temple and then, and right now what's happening for the rebuilding of the temple is there's a shift going on in the body of Christ right now where God is saying, I'm bringing my capstone and my finishing work to the foundation of the temple. And so in Zechariah 4, you can see where the, the rebuilt temple is. And he said this, now this rebuilt temple or the capstone is going to come not by might nor by power. It's not going to come from the work of our hands, but it is going to come from the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say, and I am going to give you a double portion of grace for this work. And then he goes on to say that the hand of Zerubbabel laid the foundation of the temple, which happened when Jesus came, he laid the foundation, but his hand and the same dispensation will also finish it. So as it was in the former reign, so it will be in the latter reign even much more so because we will be partnering with heaven with a double grace anointing on this last capstone generation. And so we know um, when there is a rebuilt temple, there's got to be the priesthood that fills that temple. Well, God went a step further. He said, we have to live as priests and kings. Yes. What does that mean? Well, so it's a new kind of priesthood. You know, you see the Old Testament model of the priesthood, right. but we're, we are under the new covenant. And so we are under the new priesthood, which is the priesthood of Melchizedek. It is right. the priesthood that Jesus walked in. And if you look in the book of Hebrews, which is my favorite book in the Bible, because it really equips us how to live as these priests. So, so if you look at that, you will see that the Melchizedek priesthood was the priesthood of the priest and the king. So this is the priesthood that actually Zerubbabel's temple had because you had the two branches, right, that were beside the olive tree. Well, these two branches are governmental. These are the two sons of oil or the anointed ones that carry this authority. And just like it is like the government of America, we have three branches of government. Well, in the government of God, there are two branches of government. And it is the government of the priest, which signifies Joshua, who rebuilt this temple, and the king, which is Zerubbabel, which rebuilt this temple. And the two of them together pour the spontaneous oil into the seven churches so that we can walk in power and authority and bring heaven to the earth. When we return, Tracy will pray for you to hear God's voice clearly. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, I'm here again with Tracy Eckert. And Tracy, everyone wants to hear God clearly. How do we hear God clearly like you do? Give us some nuggets. Well, Sid, you know, um, I've heard that from a lot of people. I've heard, 
I don't think I can hear God's voice, especially from uh, people in the marketplace who are so busy. But the truth is, everybody can hear God's voice, and God wants to speak to all of us. His desire is to be near to us. And so really, the first thing that I tell people to do is, number one, you've got to believe that God is speaking to you. You've got to believe that God wants to speak to you, and you've got to believe that you can hear God, just like everybody else. And anyone that disbelieves that is believing a lie. Right. So we're exposing the lie right now because Jesus himself said, yeah. my sheep hear my voice, period. Exactly. And so you've really got to repent. I mean, if you are, have been believing that, you've got to repent, which means you've got to change your mind about the things that you thought because it's wrong and you've got to line up with the Lord. And then after that, you know, you've really got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, um, it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit enables us to prophesy, and we see that in Acts chapter 19. And I won't go into that, but it's, it's very clearly there that there's two baptisms, the baptism of John and the baptism of fire. You've got to have the baptism of fire to hear. And so you can do that, you know, you pr have somebody lay hands on you and pray in the name of Jesus that you would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so then next, um, and here's the thing, you've got, to, you've got to clear your schedule. You've got to clear your schedule, and you have to have an appointment with God. And you, you've got to ask Him, first of all, how do you want to meet with me? Because God gets to say, because He knows what your life looks like. And so we've got to say, okay, God, what does this look like for me? And so He's going to tell you when to meet with Him, and then you've got to go and meet with Him because you've got an appointment. And guess what? God is already there. He's waiting for you to show up because he knows that you're going to be there, so he's waiting for you to come. It would be just like if I was working out and I had a personal trainer. You've got a personal trainer in the Lord, and he wants to exercise your ears and your eyes in that place. And so next, uh, you got to clear your soul. And this is something that I didn't realize when I first started. But what do you mean by clear your soul? Well, I have a very loud soul life, which means I, my mind goes a mile a minute. I'm mm. a very busy person. I have seven children. I have 13 grandchildren. I, my husband has three businesses, and I have a church. So, very <laughs> busy person. So, when I, when I come before the Lord, I'm coming with a very active life. And today, even more so. I think people's attention span these days are, what, a minute? So, when you sit down to be quiet, it's not something that we're accustomed to, and we have to train ourselves to do it. And so I keep a journal next to me, and as I sit before the Lord, all of a sudden my mind will get really busy with everything I haven't done or everything I need to do. So I'll just list all of my to-dos and my laundry list of people I need to email or whatever, and I do a brain flush. You know, David commanded his soul to worship the Lord. And so what I'm doing is I'm commanding my soul to come into alignment with my spirit. And so my soul will come down and get quiet. And my spirit man rises up to connect with the Holy Spirit. And so in that time, I just then, after, the, after I'd done that, it usually takes me about 15 minutes. Some people it would take longer if they haven't been, if they're not used to doing this. God started showing up. And he would, he came to me. You know, when you go to a conference or you go in a worship experience with a corporate body, you're feeling the, the presence of God so thick and strongly. He started coming like that during my prayer time, Sid. And I would be just weeping before the Lord, and he was just washing over my soul and taking things out of me like pride and idolatry and jealousy and envy and all of this stuff that was so dirty. And, and he was washing me with his word. You know, I'm reading the Bible. He's washing me with his rhema word. And so during those times, I would get so close to him, and, and I would hear his voice. It was training my ears to hear that mm -hmm. still small voice, not that booming external voice, but the witness of the Holy Spirit. And so I became so sensitive to the witness of the Holy Spirit now that wherever I go out in the world, I'm yielded to that and I can hear him or an impression that he's giving me and I'll follow it right away. So again, it's that worship of, of obedience and sacrifice. Can you pray right now? Look into the camera and pray that we hear God's voice, we become true worshipers of God, uh, and pray that 
people with coronavirus will get healed. Okay. Yes. So for everyone that's listening out there, I just thank you, Father, for everyone. Father, I thank you for all of the viewers today. Father, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit in now. And I ask God that you would anoint their ears and their eyes. God, that they can see and they can hear what the Spirit is saying. Father, I ask now that you would anoint them for dreams and visions, that they would have dreams in the night and visions during the day. God, I pray that you would take them into these encounters, that you would lead them in this way, God. Would you teach them how to pray? Would you teach them how to understand what it is that you're showing them? And God, I pray for them that they would operate in the authority, the government authority of God, both as priest and king, and they would partner with you in the days ahead, God. I thank you that this is their finest hour, Lord, and that you're taking them into your beauty realm, God, that you're giving them power and authority over sickness and disease. And Father, I thank you that there's no fear that can come near them as they operate in this authority and in this priesthood. So, Lord, I ask now for anybody out there that hears my voice, if you have coronavirus, if you are sick in your body, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind up that fear that has attached itself to this virus, and I command you to leave them now, in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would release, right now, release your peace into their lungs and into their cellular structure. And I ask right now that strength would come back to their cells, strength and vitality. I ask that the wind of God and the breath of God would hit your lungs right now in Jesus' name, and that your lungs would be filled with the healing power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, and that you can breathe again. And I command all, um, all all uh, pain to leave your body, fever to leave your body now. And I just say resurrection life. I declare resurrection life over you. And I, I declare that you are rising up out of this in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So be it. Amen. Call now and get Tracy Eckert's revelatory brand new book, God's End Time Temple, and her anointed three-part audio series, The Seven Steps to Hearing the Voice of God. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9716. Through Tracy Eckert's prophetic book, God's End Time Temple, you will be awakened with a fresh understanding of what the biblical story of Zerubbabel means for this end time generation. Through her revelatory work. Tracy activates you to unlock biblical secrets concerning the church in the last days. Experience 100-fold fruitfulness in prayer. Decipher the signs of the times. Receive a release of supernatural strategies and solutions. Function in your biblical role as a new covenant priest and king. Access heaven and apply the living word to experience supernatural transformation in your life. Be prepared for the upcoming outpouring of God's global glory presence in these coming days. Don't miss out on getting this timely prophetic word. You have been destined to be an agent of the impossible. You will also receive Tracy Eckert's anointed three-part audio CD series, The Seven Steps to Hearing the Voice of God. Imagine how different your life would be if you could get God's thoughts, perspective, and wisdom on all the circumstances in your life. Through her audio CD teaching series, you will learn keys and mysteries to unlock God's voice for your life. Break the intellectual barrier to have spiritual encounters with God. Understand how God speaks to you through dreams and visions. Receive training for your children and grandchildren to hear God's voice. In this audio CD series, Tracy helps train your children to hear God's voice too. Tracy also includes powerful prayers of impartation. Tracy prays that the veil has been torn so you can clearly hear His voice. That God will anoint you and give you eyes to see and ears to hear. That you will begin 
begin to have dreams and visions. That you will have an angel around your bed to organize your dreams and visions. That parents and grandparents will have grace to train kids to hear God's voice and have encounters. Don't miss out on getting Tracy Eckert's revelatory brand new book, God's End Time Temple, and her anointed three-part audio series, The Seven Steps to Hearing the Voice of God. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9716. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9716 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.